Hello, I am Mac, at least for a day, and everything's going to be okay. In this video, we will be doing the third art tutorial. As usual, the tutorial voiceover is very quiet and I'm not able to adjust it, so you'll need to turn your volume up. Just be careful that it's not so loud that I blast your ears when I turn my mic back on. Let's go ahead and get in. paint mode and equipped with the brush flex tool. 
press circle to unequip the brush flex tool. Now you can use the move tool on the individual strokes in the painting. You can scope out of the painting again with L1 and circle. Do you fancy making some flowers for Connie's garden? Connie loves flowers. Let's start by making a leaf and then we can work our way up to the petals. Delete your practice painting using triangle. Then enter paint mode in the modes menu. Choose a color and a finish from the paint menu. Then choose, choose a color and a finish from the paint menu. Then choose a fleck to paint with. Use the up and down directional buttons to adjust the size of the fleck. Now paint a simple stroke just the size of the fleck. Now paint a simple stroke. Remember, the harder you press, the more opaque the flex will be. If you want to take another shot at it, just undo with the left directional button and try again. When you're happy with your leaf, go to the next step. Next, let's paint a stalk. In the context menu, you'll see a button with a plus sign icon. Select this button to start a new painting. For the stalk, we'll use the draw flex tool. Open the paint menu with square if it's closed, then select the tools menu. The draw flex tool icon is a pencil. Select it with X. Draw flex acts more like a pen than a paintbrush. The harder you press R2, the larger the stroke gets. So if you press gently, the stroke will be quite small. When you scale the draw flex tool, the fleck will get much bigger. That's because it's showing you the maximum size of the fleck. When you stop scaling, it reverts back to the smallest size the fleck can be. Try drawing a flower stalk with it. Have a few goes to practice. Adjust the pressure on R2 as you paint the stroke, so that the stalk tapers at the end. Don't worry about lining it up with the leaf though, we'll do that later. When you're happy with your stalk, continue to the next step. Now the exciting bit, the flower. In the context menu, select the Start New Painting button. By starting a new painting, the flower will be a separate object to the stalk. We're going to paint the petals with the Stamp Flex tool, plus a special ingredient. You can find Stamp Flex in the Paint Mode Tools menu. 
select it with X, then choose a fleck, color, and finish for your flower's petals. Select it with X, then choose a fleck, color, and finish for your flower's petals. Now for that special ingredient, the Kaleidoscope Guide. You can find Kaleidoscope in the Guides menu, which is in the top row of the Paint menu. The Kaleidoscope icon looks like a snowflake. Select it with X to turn it on. Leave the settings as they are for now. You can experiment with them later. You'll now have a clump of five flecks on your imp. Stamp the clump in your scene. That will set the center of the kaleidoscope. There will now be one fleck on your imp and four others floating around the center point. Whatever you do with the fleck on your imp will be mirrored by the other four. You might need to adjust your position to get a good view. You could also try rotating the fleck on your imp. To do that, hold L2 and use the sticks, or stroke the touchpad. You can use the up and down directional buttons to scale the flex. Whatever you do, make a flower you like the look of. If you mess up, you can just undo it with the left directional button and try again. Add as many petals as you like. Try using different colors and sizes. You could also try using the other painting techniques you've learned. If you want to delete parts of the bloom, just unequip the stamp flex tool by pressing circle. Then use triangle to delete any parts you don't like. If you delete the first flex you stamped, the kaleidoscope guide will still be centered on their position. With the move tool equipped, you can also move or even clone parts of the painting. Flex created with the kaleidoscope guide will always behave like a kaleidoscope, even when the guide is turned off. Go ahead and experiment. Then, when you're happy, proceed to the next step. Now we've finished painting, unequip the stamp flex tool with circle. And if it's still on, turn off kaleidoscope in the guides menu too. Scope out of the painting by holding L1 and pressing circle. Scope in the guides menu too. Scope out of the painting by holding L1 and pressing circle. Now you can assemble the parts of the flower using the move tool. Beautiful. Let's group the flower so it's a single object. Select all of the flower parts with X.
now select the group button in the context menu. There, we've made the flower a single group that we can move, scale, rotate and clone. Hmm, I spy some charming plant pots. How about we put the flower in one of them? Now let's make another flower by cloning the first one. Hold L1, then grab the flower with R2 to make a clone. We don't want them all to look identical though. Let's make a different bloom. You can scope into the flower group by holding L1 and pressing X over it. Now delete the bloom from the top of the plant. Let's do something a bit different with this flower. In the next step, I'll show you how to edit the appearance of your flex. So, let's make a beautiful new bloom for this flower. Enter paint mode and equip the Stamp Flex tool. To make this bloom look a little different, we're going to edit the Flex appearance. We can do that by selecting the Edit Flex button in the context menu. Or use the shortcut. Hold L1 and press Square to open the Flex editor. It's the same shortcut as opening a tweak menu. The Fleck editor has sliders for altering the appearance of the Fleck. They look a bit different to the sliders you see in tweak menus, but they work much the same way. Try dragging them up and down using X and see what they do to the Fleck on your imp. How exciting! The fade slider adds extra Flecks that fade away near the edges. The scatter slider adds extra flex with impasto to create a more three-dimensional clump of flex. The opacity slider makes the flex more transparent. Once you've adjusted the sliders to your liking, simply press circle to exit the flex editor and start painting with your flex. Now create a new bloom for the flower. Perhaps press circle to exit the Fleck editor and start painting with your Fleck. Now create a new bloom for the flower. Perhaps try turning on Kaleidoscope again. When you're finished, exit the painting by pressing L1 and circle. Move the new bloom onto the stalk and then scope out of the group with L1 and circle. When you're done, move on to the next step.
we have some new flowers, how about a bit of rain to water them? We can do that by creating an animated stroke. Make sure you're scoped out of any paintings or groups. Then select paint mode from the modes menu. For the rain, we'll use the rule flex tool. It's in the paint mode tools menu. The icon looks like a ruler. The rule flex tool lets you draw straight lines made of flex. Choose a fleck, color and finish for your rain. Something watery. Then close the menu with square. These flecks are going to be raindrops, so make them small using the down directional button. Move your view back from the flowers so that you can see plenty of space above them. Then position your imp at a reasonable distance above the flowers and press and hold R2. Stretch the stroke down to the grass at a slight angle, then release R2 to stamp it. This line of flex is going to be the path of the raindrop. Unequip the rule flex tool with circle, then scope out of your painting using L1 and circle. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but in the next step, I'll show you how to make it look more rainy. To animate the painting, we need to tweak it. So hover your imp over the painting you just made. Hold L1 and press square to open its tweak menu. Look for the animation page of the tweak menu. The tab has a clapperboard icon. The slider at the top controls the playback speed. Grab the slider with X and pull it to the right. You won't see anything change to start with. In order to see animation, you'll need to start time by clicking R3. Use the grab cam or the sticks to get up close to the stroke, and you'll see the flexor moving along it. You can increase the playback speed to make them move faster. The next step is to switch on pulse. When pulse is on, you won't see the whole stroke. Instead, a pulse of flex will travel down it. Select the pulse button in the animation tab of the tweak menu. Its icon is a bomb. Ah yes, that looks much more like a raindrop. You can shorten the trail of the pulse using the slider below the pulse button. Shorten the trail a little to achieve a raindrop look. Hmm, the drops are still a little on the slow side. Grab the playback speed slider and turn it right up. That's more like it. One raindrop isn't going to water many flowers though. There's a handy way to duplicate your painting without having to clone it loads of times. I'll show you in the next step. So now let's duplicate our raindrop and create a proper downpour. In the tweak menu of the raindrop painting, look for the duplicates tab. The duplicates icon is a pair of sheep just like the clone tool. This tab is used to create duplicates automatically based on a variety of options. The positional duplicates options determine where the copies appear. The option we want is around camera. Select it and see what happens. 
Wow, now it looks like it's really raining. This setting duplicates the painting around the camera automatically, so wherever we go in the scene, it will seem like it's raining. At the bottom of the duplicates tab are three sliders. They affect how many of them there are, how far apart the duplicates are spaced, and whether they are scaled randomly. Try adjusting the sliders and see if you can create an effect you like. Then close the tweak menu using the close button in the corner, or hold L1 and press circle over the tweak menu to close it. Now that we've watered the garden, let's add some finishing touches. Open the assembly menu with square, then select the search button with X. Square, then select the and press circle over the tweak menu to close it. Now that we've watered the garden, let's add some finishing touches. Open the assembly menu with square, then select the search button with X. The collection for this tutorial contains lots of great things made in paint mode. There are also more plant pots and a garden shed made in sculpt mode. Use the collection to finish making Connie's garden. Stamp some plants or pots or paint more plants of your own. Make it lovely. When you're happy with the garden, stamp the shed in there somewhere. To finish the tutorial, switch over to play mode and walk Connie through the door of the shed. This is pretty neat. I'm enjoying painting better than um, better than I did the sculpting. I wasn't very happy with how the sculpting video went, but oh well, I'll get better at sculpting later. But I'm definitely enjoying painting. It's really nice. Oh well, I think that's good for now. Wait. Wait, so you have to add the shed in order to end the tutorial? That's weird. I, the, <laughs> oh well. Anyway. See, is that true? Did I just add an object that allows you to end? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's funny. Well, anyway, that is the painting tutorial. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed that a lot. I think I'm going to enjoy decorating by coloring objects and painting them more than I will sculpting their shape. I think with as far as sculpting goes, I'll be mostly making simple shapes um, to begin with. I won't get into really crazy sculpting, but as far as painting goes, I'm going to really enjoy painting and decorating things. So anyway, I have been Mac. Thank you for joining me for a day. And remember, everything is going to be okay.